Today's video, we're probably going to talk about the most useful part of Google Data Studio, and that is Google Data Studio tables. I'm going to start with a blank report, and then I'm going to show you the ins and outs of how to get tables going in Data Studio. So you might have seen in another video, which I'm going to put up above, how we've connected to the data. I have a BigQuery table coming through in uh, Data Studio, and that is the Iowa Liquor Sales data set. So first things first, this date dimension is really important. If you have a couple of dates within your data set, this is the date that defines all your filters and such. And given that, the first thing we should always do at a table um, is define a date range. You put a control in and um, give the option to select the date range because it really pays dividends uh, especially when you're looking at kind of comparisons and all that sort of stuff. So top to bottom, we have the date dimension, which we just talked about. We have dimensions, which are going to be your text titles. And then we have metrics, which are going to be your aggregations. This aggregation is just a record count per um, invoice and type number. So this is a primary key. So one per primary key grant. That is not something we'd want to put in the table. So what we can do instead is let's look at the alcohol vendors and we can look at their categories as well. So I've got a vendor name in here. I'm going to put this in um, sales in dollars here. And I've also got a something I've created myself is a profit in dollars here. So I just created a field here. I've got a state bottle retail minus state bottle cost. And I'm just going to put that in as well as another metric. So we, we could also see what the profit in dollars is. So I've got sales in dollars. I've got profit in dollars. Next thing I can do is optional metrics. So if I slick optional metrics on, I can then choose what metrics I want to see. So I might want to stick some more things into this. So I could do volume sold in gallons and volume sold in liters. And this is for to give ultimate flexibility to your users. So maybe I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it automatically, but I want to choose it. So when you put some optional metrics in here, you can go into optional metrics and choose what metrics you want to see. So currently I have sale in dollars. I've got profit in dollars. If I want to see volume sold in gallons and volume sold in liters, I can just click these and they'll come into my data set. It's as simple as that. And I can also take those out as well. So you see they're in there. I can go back to optional metrics and I just want to see my sales. So let's take all of this out. And then you just see vendor name and sales in dollars. Another thing I want to do is add drill downs into my data. And you can do that by just clicking add a drill down. And you pick a default drill down here. So I'm just picking vendor name. But what I want to also see is store name where things were sold as well. So this gives me a drill down and I can drill down into these dimensions here. So I start off a vendor name and I can drill down from here. So this is drilling down on all the information. So I started on vendor name, I go and drill down to category name, and then the final drill down is store name. And for each of those three things, I've got sales and dollars and profit and dollars. If I drill back up and I just select one, I can drill down on just Diageo America. So this is just Diageo America, sale and dollars and uh, sale and dollars on the different categories and then we'll go down to Diageo America again and then you've got the profit of dollars here. So just to prove this I'm going to throw on the show summary row and this will show my totals. So you'll see I've got 442 uh, and that is when I drill back up and drill back up again that is my sale dollars for Diageo. We actually have 3.4 billion worth of alcohol sales within this state. Same for Diageo Americas. Actually, let's go to Jim Bean Brands. Drill down in that, 261 million. You can see that in the drill down. So you can either do that, it, just to take off the drill, all we do is, is, is click again, and you'll see all these things highlighted here. You can also go in and you can drill down here. So you'll left click something and drill down, and that also uh, drills down. But you have to highlight first and then drill down if you want to drill down on the specific thing. So there are two big ones is the optional metrics and the drill downs. Um, as I showed you, there's a summary row where you can add on the page. Let's go a little bit more down here. We have primary sort and secondary sort. We have the default date range. So I wouldn't use this. 
I would use auto here and use this for my date range. So what I can do in this date range filter here is I can just go to uh, last year. And that is the year of 2021. And I'm gonna apply the filter here. So this is filtering my whole table for 2021. So you can see in that year I had 428 million. And what you can use this for is a comparison date range. So I would suggest setting a date range here and then using a comparison date range within the table itself. And the comparison date range can just uh, filter, just give you a comparison on every single metric you have to a previous year or previous period. And that's what I'd use it for. I'd either, if you're looking at quarters, use a previous period. If you're looking at years, use previous years. I think previous period will get us there anyway. So previous period, we've got January 2020 to December 2020. Gonna apply this. For tables in order to get them, if you have a situation like this for tables in order to get them in the right format, just double click on any line and it'll come in here. So you can see like your sale in dollars, you can see the difference change over a year. You can see the profit in dollars difference change over a year. This works all on the drill downs as well. So if I drill down, it computes this with the new dimensions. So I've got American vodkas, they're up. Profit on American vodkas are up 1.9%. So that works on every single slice that you would pick in here and then if i want to bring also in my optional metrics that will work on this as well so i can see the differences in my gallons as well so i'm going to turn the optional metrics off for a second just have my sale in dollars because it'll just make this a little bit easier to view all the way through because now i'm going on to style and um, so a couple of options here they're all pretty straightforward up the t on the table header it's just looking at this header here do i want to wrap the text i've nothing to wrap do you want to make the text a little bit bigger do i want to change the font of the text i'll just leave everything the same next is on to table colors so these are all specific so this is the table header background i can change that just if i wanted to change it to that uh, kind of light turquoise blue there cell border color we can also change that so if i want to change that to black and then you can have an odd or even row color so that looks like that that doesn't look great i'm just going to reset that and then your title your table labels and your table labels are your inside the rows uh, and we can change the coloring in there if we wanted to just set that back so you can also play with your table footer uh, you can take off your pagination so that doesn't show how many pages you have. You can use compact pagination, which doesn't really do much. Uh, and then you can change this to, you can change the borders to solid. That's not showing up great because it is that gray color. So I'm going to change it to black and kind of show you how this looks. If you get it up a little bit more and you can do a dashed or, or dotted or double. This is financial data, so I'm gonna do a double. I think it looks good. And I'm gonna take this down um, just to normal. And there's a double line there. Okay, so the missing data is just, if you had any missing data in your table, what does it show up as? You've got a couple of options in there. So if I turn off the drill down, all my dimensions are gonna come into this table. And this will just show how they can be styled a little bit differently. So I've got my vendor name, category name, and store name in here now. and I've got three dimension styling options, so I can style all these differently if I want. I can put this over to the left, this to the center, this to the right, but better just to style them all the same. Also, the metrics have a lot of different options, so you can choose what type it is. It's an either you can have a number, you can have a heat map um, for the metrics. You got a heat map, you've got a bar pub, so it can be like a bar chart instead, and you can also show the number in the bar chart as well. And with those numbers, we can compact those and you can change these, uh, the precision. So that's the number of digits after the dot. So, and then with the actual change itself, you can show the comparison and you can show absolute change. So back down here, same thing. We can style all these however we want. And um, just going back up to here, I'm gonna take the bar pub off, just leave it as a number. And I'm gonna leave it as a compact number there. So put that as a compact number. So that's really that's really it for kind of styling of tables. There's lots of options in there. There's probably more than I've showed you. And I'm gonna show you now the uh, conditional formatting. 
And what I'd normally do is I do a table one and table two. So table one would be kind of the more uh, rolled up data and table two can be your more granular data. So if you didn't want to do a drill down, you just wanted to select something and see what makes it up down below. Um, we can do, we can add another chart to this. So add another table down here. And now in this table, I want to show my, uh, what makes up the top figure. And I'm just gonna show my top 10 in here, but just quickly on this, something you might want to do as well on this chart is to take out the row numbers. So then you just have the vendor names in here. So with this chart, what I want to do is I want to look into my categories in here. Um, so I've got my vendors, I wanna look at my categories and I want to start drilling down from my top to my bottom table. So I have my category name in here and take this one out and then I am gonna have my sale in dollars and my profit in dollars. And I can just go in, I'm just gonna go in quickly just so we're on the same scale. It's just gonna go down and compact both of those. Compact both of those and then just click in here to have a nice graph. And I'm gonna take out my row numbers because they are distracting. Um, I'll pull this one up here. So I have $2 sales in here. Let me just pull profit in. And also I will do my comparison range here as well to previous period. And just apply this so these are coming through. And then once again, just click in here to make everything look a bit better. Okay, so what you can do with tables, which is really useful, is do a drill down on other tables. Um, and how you do this is chart interactions cross filtering. I want to dig into this number here in Diageo America. So all I have to do is click in here and this will drill into this table here, and this will show my uh, changes. You can kind of really drill down onto each brand and see you know, what's making up my totals, and then how are they compared to last year. So there's a hell of a lot of information available here if you know what you're looking for. Last thing I'll just show you is just to add another control, which is just gonna be a drop-down list, and we can have a look into something, so another dimension here. So what I want to now go more granular on is I want to see, instead of vendor name, I want to see for the counties, right? So I, this is over the whole of Iowa now. If I want to look into a specific county, I just have a drop-down here, so I can just look into Johnson. Johnson saw 1.9 million worth of liquor for Jim Bean. And in here we can see that Jim Bean's cocktails went up 960%. So you could just take out metrics like that. And another way to have a look at, um, at, at certain metrics very quickly is conditional formatting. So if I go back into style in my table, not my control, I can add conditional formatting to this. So what I can do is I can select a field so if I go, I want to see profit in dollars and I want to do a condition, I'm going to say greater than $10,000. And I want to highlight the category name for that. And I want to highlight it in green. So a bit like this. I'm going to save that. And I can see that the only thing was straight bourbon whiskeys were my profit was over 10 grand in Johnson. If I look into Diageo, I probably have a few more. Yeah, I've got Canadian whiskey spice from American Vodka because I gave it to Keelan Scotch whiskeys. So this is just another way of getting down to the data straight away. So if you know that somebody's coming into a report and they want that level of granularity, you kind of know what they're looking for, uh, you can make that in linked reports. So probably a lot for one video on tables, but that was just the, the deep dive on tables, showing you everything from style to functionality and, and maybe showed you a few things you'd never seen before. So I hope you enjoyed that video and I'll see you very soon for another Data Studio tutorial.